Executives at many Japanese companies have started this year, uh, this first day of the business year, Monday, by speaking before their employees. The head of Tokyo Electric Power Company said TEPCO has to help the people who have been affected by the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear accident in 2011. We will fully dedicate ourselves to working for people who are still suffering. We'll also help with the reconstruction of Fukushima Prefecture. TEPCO Chairman Kazuhiko Shimokobe spoke at another nuclear power plant about 10 kilometers away from the site of the accident. About 200 employees from both plants were present for the chairman's speech. Shimokobe also spoke about a business plan TEPCO submitted to the government last month. Under the plan, the utility is spending about $19 billion to dismantle the damaged reactors and deal with the contaminated water. He said the plan will push TEPCO gradually toward a recovery from the disaster. TEPCO President Naomi Hirose later told reporters that his company was late in dealing with the problems last year. These included a radioactive water spill at the damaged plant. Hirose said he will make sure that TEPCO will do its best this year to resolve the problems. He also said the utility will support the local residents to return to their communities. in charge of a plant to reprocess spent nuclear fuel are trying to get it up and running. They've asked to nuclear regulators to conduct a safety assessment. The check would be the first of its kind since stricter safety rules took effect last month. Kazuhiro Matsumura, vice president of Japan Nuclear Fuel, filed the application with the Nuclear Regulation Authority. The plant in Rokkasha village plays a central role in the Japanese government's fuel recycling policy. The goal is to reprocess spent fuel so it can be used again. Executives in charge of the plant strengthened measures against earthquakes in anticipation of the new safety regulations. They also installed water pumps and spraying equipment to respond to accidents. We intend to operate the facility properly, so we hope the screening will be carried out efficiently. Executives plan to complete the plant by October. They hope to then start full-scale operations. Testing at the plant is already underway, but work to complete the facility has been postponed 21 times following a series of problems. The chairman of the Nuclear Regulation Authority said it's unclear how long the screening will take. On live from us tonight, we've got one about cost cutting at uh, Fukushima as they were cleaning up. Apparently, uh, one report says that duct tape was one of the most commonly used uh, methods or um, tools, if you like, for strapping together the leaking nuclear plant after the disaster there. The operator of the Fukushima there. Daiichi nuclear power plant is getting a new chairman. The board of directors at Tokyo Electric Power Company has chosen the firm's outside director, Fumio Sudo, for the top post. Sudo will replace the current chairman, Kazuhiko Shimokobe. Shimokobe expressed his intention to step down last month after the utility submitted a new business plan to the government. Sudo joined Kawasaki Steel in 1964. Then in 2005, he became president of JFE Holdings, which was set up through Kawasaki's merger with another steelmaker, NKK. 
He's been an outside director for TEPCO since 2012. And drafting the company's business plan, Sudo proposed steps to streamline operations and boost profits. He also made a strong request to the government to shoulder part of the cost for decontamination at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. Sudo will officially assume the post on April 1st. So this is a video about should Fukushima use bananas, and the name is supposed to pop up, should Fukushima use bananas to power the future? Um, and there's a comment there, and so when you click on it from Huma Intine, what you ended up with was, and I'll get rid of this one here, uh, Tim Worstall. The Fukushima radiation leak is equal to 76 million bananas. 76 million bananas. Wow. Just wow, Tim. What did the world do to you to make you that angry? I wonder that you would say something like that. Why didn't your editors catch that? And why didn't your production catch that? Why didn't Forbes catch that? Why would Forbes allow you to put up that headline, I wonder? 76 million bananas. And what he's doing is he's talking about disintegrations per second with Beckwells in the nuclear terminology of 40 trillion Beckwells released into the Pacific Ocean so far. Now, this uh, article came out on the 8th, 10th day of um, 2013. So it wasn't very long ago. It's kind of interesting because Forbes went up for sale um, a couple of months later. Now, Tim also wrote this article here, uh, NSA Prism sounds like a darn good idea to me. That's what the government is for, to spy on you and track, trace, and database you and watch you all the time. Well, you can't make that stuff up. But yeah, Forbes went up to sale um, because they got people like that there and the editors won't stop it, I guess. I don't know what's going on. Now, Tim, Tim, uh, he's got a blog. It's really bad. I'm not going to dwell on that one. But he was, uh, he sells, he's a consultant and a dealer in scadium and other exotic metals. Well, well, uh, scadium is an isotope. It's a short-lived isotope, which is really interesting, isn't it? That here's somebody that understands that, makes a living off that, but he's claiming that 76 million bananas is the equivalent of the radiation coming out of Fukushima. He's, he's, he's so what he's doing is he's equating bananas with uranium-234, uranium-235. So if you took a piece of uranium-234, 235, the same size as a banana, you can kill everybody in your community. And then you can go to every community on the planet with that one piece, the size of a banana, the single banana, and you can kill everybody in every community. If you were dropped that into a uh, lake, you would pollute the lake till the end of time, and you would go to jail till the end of time. You would be the biggest criminal on the planet till the end of the time. If Al-Qaeda had a banana size of uranium, which is what he's equating it to in this article here, and it's amazing that Forbes never caught this and that their editors never stopped this, 
But if you had a banana-sized piece of uranium or plutonium, that's a dirty bomb. It's the same thing that they use in the A-10 Warthog to fire in other countries, but that's uranium-238 because it's on a chain reaction. That's why 234, 235, the plutonium's, you know, 24,000 year half-life, but it's so deadly, it's so, uh, it gets into your body so readily, and it's sequated into your system so fast. Uh, this is amazing that somebody that deals in heavy metals, and, and, and scadium is actually a byproduct of uranium. And so he's equating uranium, 234, 235, that's coming out of Fukushima nonstop. At the, the New York Times, we're saying it's 600 tons a day. We got peer review models that show that the ocean is radiated just after the first two weeks of the releases in a six year period, but that's just using uh, cesium 137. Uh, which is code word for uranium and plutonium, by the way, because you'll never hear uranium plutonium put into a sentence. But uh, it's it's amazing that Forbes done that. What what were they up to that they allowed this creature to write this article? And what is he up to to write this article? Uh, why what, he got ninety two thousand views on it? This is outrageous. This is an absolute betrayal of humanity that somebody would equate a banana with uranium-234, 235. Remember, the reactors don't run on bananas. They run on uranium plutonium. They don't run on strontium. They don't run on iodine-131 with a half-life of seven days, right? Think about the iodine-129 with a half-life 15 million years, iodine-129, 15 million year half-life, right? And a half-life, you got to multiply it by 10. So to 15 million year half-life, then it's actually uh, 150 million year life because it breaks down into different radioisotopes until it finally gets down to scantium, which is what he makes his money off. This is one of the most outrageous, most uh, criminal things you can imagine that you're looking at on the screen. It's embarrassing that somebody on this planet would do that, particularly embarrassing when somebody makes money off uranium byproducts like Tim does. And I, I would like to see 2,000 blogs tear this person apart today and put an end to his career and his future because that's what he deserves. We won't get our way, but that's what he deserves. And in the future, that's what people like this will be getting, except it'll be a million people screaming at him that he's a monster and that we need to put monsters like that away, right? Because he also wrote that article about prison, had a government should monitor everybody. That's what the governments are for, he said. So that's not a real human. That's a creature. That's a critter. Take care, folks. And uh, if you feel like you can blog them out and tell them that a banana got nothing to do with uranium-234, uranium-235. The situation may be worse than thought. Uh, studies from last year indicate that radioactive water will contaminate the entire Pacific Ocean in just six years. Kim Minji reports. This graphic shows the gradual contamination of the Pacific Ocean due to leaks of radioactive water from the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant in Japan. The simulation, which was run by a German marine research institute, shows the entire Pacific water is being polluted by radioactive water. Bluefin tuna has often been called diamond of the sea, a fitting phrase for the 230 kilogram bluefin tuna, which fetched about $70,000 at the year's first auction at Tokyo's Tsukiji market. The fish came from Oma Port in Aomori Prefecture, northeast Japan, which is known for its quality tuna. The winning bid was, though, much cheaper than last year's bid. Yo! The auction began shortly after 5.30 a.m. on Sunday. Wholesalers clapped their hands in a traditional ritual to pray for good business. More than 1,700 tuna hauled from ports around Japan and overseas filled the floor. The successful bidder for the highest priced tuna was a sushi restaurant chain headquartered in Tsukiji. The same firm also bought last year's most expensive tuna. I got the highest quality tuna for a reasonable price. I am sure that we can satisfy our customers. The winning bid was less than one twentieth of the all-time high of more than $1.5 million set at last year's first auction. Japanese bidders have been facing fierce competition in recent years with overseas buyers. Prized bluefin tuna is increasingly popular in countries including China. Market players seemed relieved that tuna trading is back to normal.